Welcome on ThingsBot online education course. This is the shortest way to become a ThingsBot guru. Subscribe this channel and step forward to best practices with the platform. ThingsBot supports a number of entities. They help you transfer physical world objects into virtual environment. ThingsBot supports such entities. Tenants. In previous lesson, we've learned about multi-tenancy. Tenant may refer to someone who owns or produces other entities – assets, devices, dashboards, rule chains, alarms, customers. Tenant entity may combine multiple tenant administrators' accounts. Customers – these entities represent someone who uses tenant's devices or assets. We can say that tenant produces devices for his potential customers. Customer entity as well as tenant entity may contain an unlimited number of customer users' accounts. Users can view dashboards and supervise entities. Devices or things – entities that stream telemetry and handle remote commands. In common, the particular connected thing is a device. Sensors, switches, actuators are different kinds of devices. In order to connect to ThingsBot, devices have credentials. ThingsBot allows to manage those credentials and support different credential types. We'll cover device connectivity in future lessons. Device always belong to a single tenant and may optionally belong to some customer managed by this tenant. Let's make a stop on a special class of device called Gateway. These things are able to report telemetry and receive updates on behalf of other devices. Typical use case is a local sensor network, where sensor devices are connected via Bluetooth or other wireless protocol to central device or hub. The last one is collecting and pushing data to things board. Sensors are usually constrained and do not have IP connectivity. Core device is more powerful, it's connected to the Internet and can push data via a single MQTT connection. Assets – they are entities that represent the environment where a device is being installed. To be clear, a building with a smart devices inside is an asset, a field with tracked agriculture vehicles is an asset as well. Similar to devices, assets also have attributes and telemetry. Unlike devices, assets are not able to perform RPC commands. Tenant administrator should assign assets and devices to particular customer. To make these entities visible for customer users, we'll disclose relations theme in the second part of this lesson. Devices and assets have types. You mentioned the type while creating an entity. This key helps process data from entities in different ways. You can specify completely custom types. Relations are directed connections between entities. Default relation types are contains and managed. You can use custom relation types as well. By specifying entities and their relations, you can describe real-world objects within the platform. For example, to say things board that some sensors are located in particular customer's building, you should assign each device to asset representing customer's building. Relations helps you build correct processing logic and dashboards. Dashboards – ThingsBoard unit for data visualization and asset devices controlled through UI. Tenant administrators create dashboards. To give customer user access to the dashboard, tenant administrator should assign a dashboard to this customer. To improve your knowledge, let's model an asset hierarchy for smart building use case. Create a city asset. Next level assets are North District and South District, where buildings situated. Relate districts to the city asset. Buildings are lowest level assets. Districts contain them. Now create two devices per each building, one device with type water meter, another HVAC. Relate devices to particular building. 
Now we have our asset hierarchy in place. The best way to visualize it by using entities hierarchy widget. Stay tuned and learn more about data collection, processing and visualization using ThingsBoard.